Hello and welcome back to my channel. It has been a while since I have done an update on the, any of the companies that I've been working with and I need to give an update on this one because I'm no longer working at one-on-one -on -one English and I'm relieved and excited about it and I want to just go through why I ultimately shed this company and I'm going to tell you my experience. Um, although I'm excited to be letting this particular thing go because that means I can say yes to more things in my life. In no way is this going to be a video bashing the company. However, I will be sharing my true experiences and if that reflects negatively on the company, then it reflects negatively on the company. Um, a company is always capable of improving, so if you're watching this video um, far from the date it was posted, perhaps things have improved and you can let me know about that in the comments. But for now, um, it is what it is and I'm going to share um, kind of from the beginning to um, the issues I ran into and ultimately why I ended my time at 101 English. But first, I just need to do something for myself. I made this sign because they told me I needed a name sign. And now the sign is gone. So I hope that this take took because the sign is kaput. And I will also be pitching my folio of trial props that I printed and laminated and got all ready. So these are done. So with that um, bit of catharsis out of the way and spring cleaning, let's launch into why I started teaching at one-on-one -on -one English. Now, I did remove the video on my channel um, kind of promoting and in my introduction to one-on-one -on -one English because things had changed so much. Um, so I began teaching at one-on-one -on -one English because there was um, a change in the Ministry of Education requirements and law where the Chinese companies were no longer allowing teachers to teach um, that last hour. And it also was kind of at the same time as daylight savings time. I was getting up earlier, lost that last hour, um, one slot at GoGo Kid, those two slots at VIP Kid, and I was seeing cuts in my pay right and left. And I was looking for an option to have more money coming in. So for the time that I did work at One on One English, it did help me to kind of earn a little bit. But there are some things that quickly kind Kind of happened along the way that made it so it wasn't always the best use of my time and here's what I mean so when you get hired at one-on-one -on -one English the way it works now is you have your interview and your orientation and they give you your base pay first of all my base pay was much lower than what I wake at GoGo -Go Kid and it was the same as my base pay at VIP Kid um, I think it was $8. No, no, I actually was a little bit more than uh, VIP Kid. I make $8 at VIP Kid, and they did give me eight fifty. So I did appreciate that. So the reason why I opened it one-on-one -on -one English for those last couple of slots versus VIP Kid was my base pay at one-on-one -on -one English was... Um, higher. I have heard that people have been lowballed, and I've also heard interesting things about the interview process. Um, I found my model student to be quite difficult, and also in the interview process, there were like four different people aside from me in the Zoom room, like watching it. It wasn't quite quite clear to me what was going on. Maybe it was for training purposes. I'm not quite sure. Um, but the interview, I did my best, um, but they still found quite a few things to knock me down point-wise. And also, after I taught my first class with them, um, I started about two weeks later. I started the first week of December. And I remember that I received an email, um, a, like a quality assurance. Um, it was like a mentor feedback email about a class where there was like 60 slides of material. I talked to the 29 minute mark which I never like to do. And then when I was reading through this mentor feedback, I was really confused because it was telling me to do more extension, um, even though the lesson had gone over time and there was so much content. As I taught more one-on-one -on -one English lessons in the beginning, I was really pleased with the curriculum. However, I found over time, I found more and more mistakes. I found, um, there to be like not like anything in the teacher directions or like it wasn't I don't know maybe it's because they're migrating things over to a new portal I don't know again if you're watching this in the future I hope that you don't run into those things in the future but I'm not a part of the curriculum when you are an independent contractor the curriculum for these kinds of companies and for one-on-one -on -one English specifically their deal too is you are scheduled classes with students the curriculum is ready-made and I was often finding that the curriculum 
um, kind of wasn't up to my own personal standards of what I would hope to see. Um, I've seen a variety of things in the curriculum. Some levels were better than others. I found in particular the upper levels, like level six, where I had a regular student, I found it to be um, strange at times, and I also found there to be lots of typos. I remember specifically I shared with some teacher friends, there was a bizarre story where a man went into a party and, like, he brought white powder with him. It was very strange. I think I'll actually leave that in the comments below. I'll just put the text. I don't want to use any proprietary materials, um, but if you're interested about what kinds of things might show up in a reader in an advanced class, um, I'll share a little excerpt from that because there were just some bizarre things um, that happened in the curriculum. I also saw some Disney images and I saw like some things that they definitely didn't own. Like there were some video lessons where they have you watch and start and stop a video. And one of the videos I did was from a school district's website, and, like, they c clearly had no connection, like, videos being used in the curriculum that they didn't own or make, that was a first for me. It was a first for me to blatantly see, like, material from Disney, videos that a company didn't own or have any... I don't know, maybe they paid the individuals for, but I didn't see any notes about any of that on my end. The other thing that ended up happening was the policies changed a lot. And the reason why I actually ended up taking down my video was because they changed their referral policy to the point where one, they weren't putting referrals that I knew I earned on my pay slip, and I had to follow up about that. And then after I'd followed up a bunch, they then announced a policy that your referral, you'd only get paid for it if they made it past the probation probationary period, which was three months. And just to put that in context, I started in December, January, and I left before the end of February now. So technically, I guess I'm leaving before my probationary period is even up. So that just goes to tell you, I guess, if you're trying to refer for one-on-one -on -one English or you're wondering at this time, that policy is... Um, has changed a lot and I've recently seen that as teachers follow up about referrals the policy tightens up more which is strange there's no referral tracking system no trial class conversion tracking system I never saw any note on any payment for any trial conversions even though I saw I think I saw a repeat student I'm not quite sure um, I, I ended up just kind of leaving that as like a lost cause and I got frustrated because I knew that I had people messaging me saying that they were my referral and I ultimately had to kind of tell people that, hey, I'm no longer referring and I have just been teaching for the past month to finish out my contract. The thing that made me decide that even teaching wasn't worth my time was when I would log in and my student would be incorrect or there'd be no PowerPoint. I would get locked out of the Google Slides. I would get like the Zoom room wouldn't work. And this happened to me multiple times and it was an ongoing issue. I tried a variety of things to fix this. I tried to message them ahead of time, wouldn't get a response. Response. Um, I would try to message them ahead of time and then they'd tell me there'd be no problem and obviously there was. So I just decided that okay I'm going to show up to class and if it's ready for me to teach um, I'll prep those few minutes before and I'll be ready to teach. And then what ended up happening is I would show up, there would be no Zoom room, there was no PowerPoint and I'd have them then as class had started and I wasn't in the room messaging me go in the class go in the class and I refused to teach um, that class and then for a few more weeks it was fine but on my last day teaching at one-on-one -on -one English it actually happened again so I, I can't say that this issue was ever resolved because it happened to me on my last day. They tried to throw me in. I looked at the beginning of the day around 4 a.m. my teaching run and there was a regular student of mine. But when I went back to check before my hour teaching there had started, um, there was a new student there. I was locked out of the Google Slides. It was this weird kind of assessment I'd never done. And I also um, refused that class because if you are an independent contractor and the Zoom room is not set up or the curriculum is not there, the minimum has not been met. Like they tell you in the teaching agreement that you, there will be curriculum. There will be a place to have the class. And those things need to be ready by the start of class time. And if they're not, um, I believe that I was well within my rights to refuse. I'm sure they were frustrated with me, but they could go ahead and pay someone else a short notice bonus class or substitute and figure that out because I don't like to be in a situation where I'm set up for failure with clients. And ultimately, in these online teaching scenarios, that's what is most important is making sure that you satisfy your client, um, you're enjoying your teaching, you're doing what you need to do. And if the minimum is not in place for you to be successful, meaning the curriculum's not there and there's no Zoom room, I don't really know um, what 
what is there? If that's not there, then how can you possibly be successful as a teacher? That was the, the reason why I actually like quit because I was finding it to be way more stressful than it was worth for 850 base pair per class. They do have some incentives. Those policies also kind of change. It seems like a moving target. I was never able to meet them. That was fine. Um, and, you know, I just, I know that there's a lot of change with new companies, but I've been with VIP Kid for about two years now. And I was with GoGo Kid from the very beginning to now. And there's been a lot of changes with GoGo Kid. But what I will say I've always appreciated about the other companies I've worked with is they would announce a policy and then it would be effective by a future date. It wouldn't be retroactive or currently active. And there wasn't this weirdness about oh, we're going to change like trial classes. I also noticed that the wait time, they had the student no-show wait time at 10 minutes. And one day I checked and there was just, it said 15 minutes in the portal and there had never been an email to us about it. So I just really didn't appreciate how I didn't feel informed. Um, they did send messages on Slack, but I found them to be disingenuous and I found them to be not very helpful. I found that teachers would write about issues and they would get the feedback that they needed to fix things and just just didn't. Um, if I sound harsh, it's because I'm relaying my experience, like my own personal experience. Maybe you had a better experience with them. Maybe for you, all of these things in account, it's still worth it for you to teach like an hour with them or more. That's fine. We're allowed to have different opinions and experiences about companies. I'm not out here saying that, you know, GoGo Kid and VIP Kid are better because maybe for other people they're not. I'm talking about my own experience about what I'm in English here and why I quit. So I hope that you will understand why I'm laying it all out here on the table. I feel that because I opened up this kind of can of worms by sharing the information about one on one English and kind of promoting them, I feel that I need to close this chapter by honestly relaying my experience unfiltered and unedited straight shooting. The other thing I did not appreciate was the rude in-class messages I would receive that would tell me how to change my teaching while I was teaching. The staff members did always have the ability to message me on Slack about student needs. I think one time I got a message complimenting me on how a class went and the other times I just got weird PMs about how I needed to change my teaching methodology while I was teaching and I just didn't appreciate it. I've had messages pop up like that a couple of times at VIP Kid and GoGo Kid, but those were such outliers and the things that one on one um, they happen kind of frequently. So I just really didn't appreciate that. And I actually would reply that it's not appropriate to send this to me during class. You may message me on Slack and I never received any Slack messages. So I was open and I opened and I gave them that opportunity to talk to me on Slack to tell me about student needs. And that time on Slack, I'm not even paid for and I offered it. So I just found that to be really confusing um, that I was open to, of course, always improving for our client, but I never really received feedback in a way that was useful to me. I replied to the feedback email that I did receive telling them about how the class had gone to 29 minutes and I never received another mentor feedback email. I only got the one. Um, I never really received messages on Slack, but I have heard other teachers um, have had some some messages um, and some emails so if you're open and you don't mind receiving a lot of messages and from a variety of avenues there's not really a streamlined process there so I guess just um, have a thick skin and go in you know ready to accept that feedback the other thing there's one there's oh there's more there's there's so much more guys the Zoom room situation, a lot of kids would take classes on their phone and the technology was just really not stable on the students and a lot. Um, the other thing was the scheduling was just they wanted you, once you had a regular student, they wanted you to be available basically forever. So when I told them I have a vacation the first week of March and I told them in January, they told me to submit leave, a okay, leave request. And that just scheduling really doesn't work for me. I don't really 
have the ability to know what my life is going to be like. I don't have a crystal ball. And so what I've always really appreciated about this work was most of the companies that I worked with, um, that most of them had more flexible scheduling. So although they say there's flexible scheduling, when you do have a regular student, they will expect you to always be available for that student, but the student can cancel on you and they might just not show up on your schedule and it might not show up on your pay slip. I've definitely had that. So the, 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 you know, the commitment doesn't seem to go both ways. So that was really confusing to me as well. I never really understood the guaranteed hour policy. I had some referrals of mine try to understand it. The way I understood it was you sign up for an hour certain days and you are always available and they will always give you classes. But apparently it, it changed at some point and like, okay, but you're available, but you might not get classes. I... With the policies, I'm, I'm ta the reason why I sound like I don't understand is because I don't understand because the way that they did policies is they would just message on Slack, they would email us or put it in the portal. So I never really knew where to look and it would just change. Like I would just check the portal one day and things would just be different. So I understand that they have the right to operate their business the way that they want to, but I found it really confusing. So if you're looking to me to be like, can you explain their business practices and policies? I really can't. Um, I think that there's always a lot of room for improvement with anyone, with individuals, with long-standing companies and new companies. And I hope that if someone who works at one-on-one -on -one or someone who loves one-on-one -on -one watches this video, I hope that you understand that I'm sharing these things because I'm honestly relaying my experiences. I truly do hope that one-on-one -on -one is able to bring a fantastic education experience to students in Vietnam. I think Vietnamese students deserve a great company that can serve them like live one-on-one -on -one English class with native speakers. I I really um, admire that mission and I really do wish um, them success in achieving that. However, with these things in place, I really just don't, um, I don't see how they will be able to retain the quality teachers they will need to fulfill that mission. So I, op I offer this feedback um, to anybody who would like to take it to improve and um, move forward. If you're a teacher who's burnt out teaching at one-on-one, -on -one, I hope you know that you're not alone. If you are having a good experience at one-on-one -on -one English, but you're having a bad experience somewhere else, um, I hope that you know that everything will be different <laughs> at different times. The nature of this business is things will continue to change all of the time. And people's experiences will just be different depending on when they start, what policies are in place, and kind of what happens in between. Ultimately, it just was not a good fit for me teaching at one-on-one -on -one English. And also with daylight savings times coming up, um, with that hour coming back and us being on a different time difference, one hour later here, um, but they don't change, it will no longer work for me and my schedule. I only worked that one hour at one-on-one -on -one English. I never worked other hours, even though they would message me to um, often. <laughs> multiple times and I would always clearly relay that I'm only available that one hour. Um, it no longer works for me because it now overlaps with the spin classes I like to go to at the gym. So I'm ultimately choosing my personal health, well-being, stress, and where I can make more money. Um, everyone is going to choose what works best for them. If one-on-one -on -one English is a place where you enjoy working, if things have improved, you can feel free to let me know in the comments. Um, if you had similar experiences at one-on-one -on -one English or elsewhere with, uh, you know, things being kind of crazy <laughs> sometimes, feel free to let me know as well. I hope you appreciate this video in the way that it was intended. Um, I'm in no way trying to cause any harm um, to their business. I just really think that it's important to be honest about your experience places and to share why something is no longer for working for you if you if you since I, I put out the video sharing why one-on-one -on -one English might be a great place to work so it's now incumbent upon me to share why I'm no longer working there so with all of that said um, I hope you again appreciate this video I've been going on and on for quite a bit now and I I don't think I'm going to edit any of it. I think I'm just going to let it stand as it is. So I hope it came through coherent. Um, I hope it came through in a way that made sense and added value to you and your life. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I will be putting out more content, not necessarily online teaching related. But if you enjoyed this video, you want to hear more from me, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you so much and have a lovely day. Thank you. Take care.